You are listening to the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Brought to you by Fit Plus Faith. The podcast for Christian women to grow healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. Jumpstart your health with your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox. Here's your host, Dr. Melody Stevens. Hello and welcome to the Healthy Christian Women podcast. I am your host, Dr. Melody Stevens, and this is episode 29. In today's episode, we have a very special guest with us. This is Jen Baxter from Live a Fast Life, and she is an author, blogger, and speaker, and she is going to be sharing with us the journey that she has gone through to get to a place of improving her health, her mental health, and her spiritual health as well, which is So beautiful to see how she's done that and incorporated, if you've ever heard of it, living in a tiny house. These are the things that you've seen on TV most likely, and these little tiny houses popping up everywhere. Well, Jen actually lives in one, and so that's a part of her story to simplify life and really bring it down to the basics and live a fabulous, abundant, simple, and tiny life. Live a fast life. So welcome, Jen. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. Well, let me go ahead and pray for us and for this episode, and then we will dive right in. Thank you so much, God, for this day, and thank you for bringing Jen and I together. Thank you for everything that you're doing in her life and in my life and how we are able to use our testimonies of what you have done, moving us into a place of health health and wholeness in all these areas of life that you created in us, our mental health, our spiritual health, our physical health, how we are all in all things you're working in our life and you're wanting us to glorify you in all these different areas. And we just, we love you, God, and we ask Holy Spirit that you will speak to the hearts of our listeners and myself and Jen as well in this episode as she shares her story and as we see how you have worked in her life. Thank you so much for her being a living testimony of everything that you have done and we give this day to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So Jen, you have such an interesting story and I must say I have seen these little tiny houses, but I have never met anyone that has actually bought one and had experience with it and you had yours made. And, um, and the process though of that is that you went through a process of really kind of paring down things in your life, taking away a lot of the clutter. And then that gave you mental clarity and it gave you physical clarity. Um, you had a lot of physical healing during that time, as well as um, some spiritual clarity as well. So we would love to hear more about your story. Oh gosh, it's a, it's a big story. <laughs> um, I guess the, the catalyst I feel like for me was in um, 2013, because that's when my mom passed away. And she was like my best, best friend. And I was a lot like her. And up until that time, I feel like I was just kind of living the quote unquote, typical middle-class American life. Um, I had a lot of debt. I was just planning to get the big mortgage and, you know, be in debt for the rest of my life and work a job that I didn't necessarily love. It was all right, but it wasn't great. And, you know, just kind of doing the average thing, I feel like most of us do. And I started to have some health issues actually in 2012. But then when my mom was diagnosed with cancer in early 2013, that kind of just got pushed to the side because I was focusing on her. And she unfortunately only um, lived for six months between her diagnosis and when she passed away. So that in and of itself was a huge eye opener because she just had all these things that she always said she was going to do later. And of course she thought she had later, like we all do. And I saw it right in front of my eyes. I saw her run out of time. So that was kind of an eye opener for me. But then really the, the big catalyst was that I was um, going through her stuff after she had passed away and I was reading one of her journals and I actually am reading in her own handwriting. So it was like, she was sort of speaking to me and she said that she had let fear rule her entire life and that she had really held back from doing a lot of things in her life because of fear. And she was probably about 68. I think I figured out when she wrote this and she passed away when she was 72. So she had no idea that, you know, she only had four years left when she wrote this. 
And it just really, really shook me because I, I was a carbon copy of her. I always was worrying about everything under the sun and just kind of held back in my life. And when I saw that, I thought, okay, I can't, I can't go down the same road. I can't do the same thing that she's done her whole life. And it really just lit this fire in me that I wanted to live with more gusto and do it both for me and then also sort of as a tribute to her. So that sort of started everything, but I, I really feel like God just took the reins. And I always give him all the credit because I am not smart enough to think of all this myself. But he really just sort of started stripping me down. I call it stripping me down and cleaning me up because he really just started simplifying my life and just pulling away all the excess. And it ended up being in several different areas of my life. It ended up being the physical clutter. And as I went through that physical clutter, it brought up all this emotional clutter that I had just been stuffing and stuffing. And so then I had to address that as I was getting rid of the physical stuff. And then because I had come down with um, these health issues, it was actually advanced adrenal fatigue. So I was just shy of being bedridden, basically. Um, and because I had come down with that, I really had to make a lot of lifestyle changes because there's no magic pill for adrenal fatigue. You just have to make lifestyle changes. So by de-stressing my life, by getting rid of a lot of this stuff and getting rid of all of these emotional issues that I've been holding on to and cleaning up my diet and changing the products I was using, that was all in turn making me feel healthier and making me feel stronger. So it was like three separate areas, but yet they were all very closely tied together. And I do feel like at one point God gave, he speaks to me in visuals a lot. And I feel like he gave me this visual of just like, his creation in the middle, and then kind of all that other stuff outside of it, all that other noise, all that other excess stuff, the toxic food, the, the material things we don't need, the spiritual baggage. And he was like, just try to get as close as you can to this and just get rid of all of that. And I kind of held on to that visual because I was like that, you know, I can, that I can make sense of. And from there it just took off and it really was just kind of a snowball. And you know, I cleaned up my diet, cleaned up my products, did a lot of emotional and spiritual work going through all the gunk. Um, and then, like you said, I actually got rid of about probably 80% of my physical belongings and I moved into a 160 square foot tiny house. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you still live in this <laughs> tiny house? Um, I don't, but only because I unfortunately chose a builder who didn't really know what he was doing. So after I moved into it, and I actually was on the HGTV show. So at the end of the show, ask if you was yes. At the end of the show, something. Well, it looks like everything was you know great and puppies and rainbows at the end, and it actually wasn't because once I moved in, then all these issues just started coming up. And now this was three, almost four years ago. So the tiny house movement has grown tremendously since then. But at that time, you know, everybody was sort of just up and coming and, and he just, he got in over his head. So it was nothing malicious, but I unfortunately had to move out after about four months, but I still very much live a minimalist lifestyle. Um, I've actually been sort of a nomad for the last year. I've just been traveling. I don't live anywhere permanently. And that was, again, all God's idea. He's just sort of been directing my path. And I do feel like that is coming to an end. I feel like that season is coming to an end. So I hope to do another tiny house very soon. That's wonderful. Oh my gosh, how amazing. What a crazy journey that you've been yes. on. And you know, as you were talking, I just kept thinking about the scriptures talking about God being the vine dresser and he prunes away the things that are not bearing fruit so that the ones that are left can then bear more fruit. And it's like, you now have a completely different life than what you had five years ago. And that wake up call of seeing your mother and her writing that said, I was held back by fear and never did the things that I want to do when tomorrow is not guaranteed. Like, why not? Like what is holding you back, you know, and, and asking God to open those doors for you and reveal that to you so that we can all be living and taking advantage of this, this short time that we have anyway. And so, man, that is just 
there's so much to be gained from that. You know, we really don't want to look back at our life and be regretful. And that's not what God wants of us either. He wants us to experience life and joy and peace and his presence and his guidance and direction. But yet we live in a culture that, you know, we can do it all ourselves. And so we're going to create the life that we want. And then just like you said, like that image, it's like God is at the center, but there's all this other stuff that is like interfering with our ability to fully, fully connect and, and find the fullness and the joy that he wants us to have. But we have clouded it by so many other things. And so my goodness. And so tell us a little bit about the physical changes that you ended up making uh, that, that were necessary for you to make for your health and then how you have actually, how did that help you and how are you feeling now? Um, I had to make a lot of just basic lifestyle changes, I feel like, because my diet used to be terrible. And I, again, I feel like it was kind of typical though. And I just ate a lot of processed foods and, you know, the meals that come in the bags and you just dump them into a pan and cook it up like I would do that and pasta and grilled cheese and lots and lots of sugar. And that was kind of like my diet. And I always just said that, oh, that's just the way I am. Like when it came to, I had a very um, sensitive stomach. It was always upset. And I was always very shaky. My hands would shake a lot. And I always just said, oh, that's just the way I am. And it wasn't until the adrenal fatigue happened and I was sort of forced to make these lifestyle changes that I noticed these other things were just suddenly magically going away. And when I changed my diet and really I just went completely gluten-free and then I tried to be as dairy-free and sugar-free as possible. Um, and when I did that, and actually I was on an extremely restricted diet for about six months that my naturopathic doctor put me on and that was way extreme. But after that time period, it was like, I started sleeping better. My skin cleared up. My stomach became like totally normal. And you know, all these things. And I stopped shaking all the time. And all these things that I just thought were me just went away and got better simply just because of my dietary changes. And then, you know, for adrenal fatigue, it's very important that you get tons and tons of rest. So I would try to always be in bed by 10 o'clock. Um, I would let myself sleep in again, thankful to God that he put me in a situation where I could do that. But I slept in until about nine every morning. Um, really de-stressing was kind of the, the key to everything. And that was even more difficult for me because I'm very, very empathic. So I pick up everybody's feelings and everybody's emotions. And I just, I, I almost kind of want to like heal them by like taking it on. And I've been like that since I was a little girl. So that makes it even more stressful because I'm not only stressing out about my own stuff, but I'm stressing out about everybody else's stuff. So it took a lot of intentional slowing down and being still. And I would just go sit outside sometimes for a half hour at a time and just sit and just put my feet in the grass and just either be totally quiet or maybe I would pray, but it was just about that slowing down and not go, 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 go all day. And I would meditate, but I wouldn't do the, the ohm thing where I'm trying to clear my mind. That's not what I would do. When I would meditate, I would intentionally focus on giving things over to God. So I would picture myself either on a beach or, you know, in a field or whatever. And I would visualize myself literally taking these weights off of me and giving them to God. And it was amazing the difference that I would feel after I would come out of one of those, you know, meditations, if that's what you want to call it. And it was just a lot of stuff like that, but the, the difference was like night and day. And I had gone through so many traditional doctors and been told so many times that nothing was wrong with me. And they all wanted to put me on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication and basically implying that I'm making this all up. So it was amazing to actually start to feel different. And the naturopath did sort of give me some different like vitamins and supplements and stuff along the way. But I really feel like the main thing that changed my health was these lifestyle changes. And then of course that just sort of played in very nicely to the whole simplification process because it was like, well, I'm already, you know, simplifying my physical clutter and simplifying my surroundings. So 
the little bit of things that I'm going to put in my little tiny kitchen are going to be very healthy things. And, you know, it all just sort of tied together really nicely. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Yes, I think we can, so much of us, so many of us need to do some more spring cleaning in our life, basically, yeah. you know, and so many different things in our, it's just easy. Like, like I remember reading through your book and you said, when I decluttered everything and I was getting ready to move into this small house, I gave away, it was like a 17 foot moving truck full of stuff for one person, right? Yep. Yep. What is happening? I remember when we moved about six months ago or so. Oh my gosh. I was like, there's two of us, me and my Mm -hmm. husband and my cat. Like it is not possible that we have this much stuff and it overwhelms you and you walk into your house and you don't feel rested. You don't feel calm. You just see, even if it's clean, it's water everywhere. And it just, there is so something beautiful and wonderful about getting rid of the stuff that we don't need, you know, and if you bring something new in, what can I find that I'm no longer right. needing than that I could intentionally give away? You know, I think about that for, for parents of small children, when they get so many toys and they get so many presents and it just accumulates and pretty soon the whole house is overrun with their children's toys. So it's like, they have to be very intentional as well. Like we've got to give them away when they're not using them anymore because it's so easy. It's like, we live in a culture of abundance, but we take it for granted that we live in abundance. That's why we have so much stuff is right. the abundance that's happening, but we don't see it that way. And it begins to actually go to a detrimental side. So your philosophy of living a fast life, fabulous, abundant, simple, and tiny is really about decluttering everything so that you can more enjoy what you do have, you know, I mean, it's just, it's so good. Thank you so much for sharing your story, you know? And actually, like you just said, I think a lot of times if it is clean, if everything is put away and it's not right there in your face, that you almost kind of are under this deception that, oh, well, I don't, I don't have clutter. I don't have a lot of stuff, but you still have it. It's just all tucked away in these cabinets and in these closets. And really, I feel like, at least in my own experience, it wasn't even, because I'm a neat freak, like totally a neat freak. So when you came into my apartment before, I mean, it looked immaculate. But the difference was that once I started actually paying attention to what I had, because if it's all tucked away, you don't even really necessarily think about it. But once I started paying attention to it, then I could see how much more I had than what I actually needed. And it's kind of just more about this mindset shift, I think, because so many times, even if we're not using this stuff, we're like, but I have to hold on to it. I have to keep it. Like if somebody just walked up to your door and said, hey, let me come in and take half of your books. You'd be like, no, and you'd slam the door on because you're like, they're my books, they're mine. I, I have to have them. But that's the, the attachment that I think God wanted to break in me because he was like, I got bigger things for you to do. I, got you, you know, plans for you. I need you to pay attention to this other stuff. So it's not that he's going to take away all my stuff, but he just doesn't want me to be like holding on to it with a death grip either. Like it can come, it can go and I'm fine either way because it's just stuff. So it was kind of more about that. And, and like you said, it, it was shocking though, still just to stand on the curb and look in the back of the moving truck when I moved and be like, what in the world do I fill up an entire truck with by myself as one person? So it's crazy when you actually can see it with objective eyes. Yes, absolutely. And you have some really good practical tips for how to actually go about taking, you know, going through this stuff and taking it away. So what could you share with our listeners is when they're feeling overwhelmed and I, I don't, I'm afraid to get rid of my stuff, but, but I know that I do have too much. So what are some tips to help them begin to, uh, move through that process a little easier? Um, the first thing that I always tell people might sound a little silly or it might not be as like fun and exciting because people just kind of want to dive in and get their hands in the clutter. But I always say to figure out why you want to do it first. And that's only because it's not an easy process. So there are going to be days where you're going to be like so frustrated, so tired of going through your stuff. But if you already know ahead of time what your why is, and you have this 
image in your head of what you want your end outcome to be. And that could be anything. For me, it was, okay, I know I want to move into this 160 square foot tiny house. But it could literally just be that you just want more space in your house. You want to feel lighter when you come into your house. You want to have room for guests, whatever that is. And then when you can picture that and when you can reference that, it's going to make it so much easier on those days when you're frustrated because you're like, wait a minute, I know why I'm doing this. It's because I'm tired of parking my car in the driveway when I have a garage. So this is why I'm doing it. So my car can park in the garage or like whatever your why is. And then I also always tell people, make sure you work in small chunks because I feel like that's why it seems so overwhelming is because you stand back and you look at your entire house and you look at everything you have and you think, oh my gosh, this would take like the rest of my life to go through this. But if you just do your bedroom first, or even smaller than that, let me just do my closet. Like, just take little steps at a time, and then you're going to get this momentum going, and you're going to start to feel that feeling of freedom and empowerment that you actually get from decluttering, and then that's what's going to carry you into the next space, into to the next space. But it does that even takes some discipline because if you're in your bedroom and you find something that belongs in the kitchen, you need to just take it to the kitchen and set it down, but then leave and go back to your bedroom. Don't then be like, oh, now I'm gonna start doing the kitchen. And then somehow you end up in the bathroom. You just have to sort of work on one area, finish that area, take whatever is getting donated from that room to Goodwill, then start on the next one because even that, if you just kind of make piles, donation piles around your house, but you never take them anywhere, then that's kind of defeating the purpose. So I feel like if you just really focus on just small chunks, it makes it a lot less overwhelming. Yes. And you also mentioned in your book, which is something I have done as well when we just moved, is see if there's things that you can actually sell so that you can make a little yes. bit of money, a little bit of side cash with the yes. stuff that you're, that you're donating or giving away anyway. And that, that was really helpful for me. I was able to get rid of some of the things that I knew I didn't want anymore or they just didn't work in the new place and I wanted to get rid of them. But I was able to make extra money by selling it online and then I could use that money to actually buy the new things that I did want or the things right. that were going to work for my new space or whatever. So you, it's kind of fun. You're like, hey, I'm kind of sitting on a little treasure trove here of a you lot of <laughs> that you never know that people want. That's what's so weird. I see people post the most crazy stuff on these websites or on Facebook Marketplace or whatever, and people buy them. So it's like, don't, don't think that someone might want it. Just try, just post it and see what happens. And, and that was really wonderful. I made, I made quite a few hundred dollars just on, on some key pieces. Right. And anything that you make, I always tell people, is more than you had yesterday. So even if you're like, oh, what's somebody going to pay me for this? Like $20? Yeah, but that's $20 more than you had yesterday. So yep. anything you can make back, I feel like, is you know a little bonus. Yeah, absolutely. So then going through this journey that you've been on, tell us a little bit about, um, a little more about the spiritual side that you felt that God was leading you and guiding you and how things might have changed maybe with your relationship with him throughout this process? Oh gosh, I feel like that's kind of the biggest thing that's come out of this whole process. And I didn't even, I didn't even realize it when it was happening, I think necessarily, but um, you know, I was saved when I was 28. So I've had a relationship with God for a long time, but there was this whole other level that I didn't even know existed. And I didn't realize that I was so distracted for so long until he took the distractions away. And then it was like, oh my gosh, like this is what I've been missing the whole time. There's this clear communication now. And I think actually the, the health issues ended up sort of being a blessing in disguise because it forced me to slow down. I mean, I literally, I would take a shower and I would be so exhausted from taking a shower, I'd have to go lay down. And if I tried to carry laundry across the house, my heart would beat so fast that I thought I was going to have a heart attack. So I had to slow down. I had no choice, which then forced me to spend more time with him and spend more time reading my Bible and spend more time praying. And because he was, I guess, stripping away all this other stuff, I mean, it's just like you always hear, like, he's all you need. So as he was taking these other things away, it just became clearer and clearer and clearer that, like, all I actually need is him. And because I picked up on that and started throwing myself just completely into that, then, of course, he responded. And now it's just made 
the relationship like so much more rich and I feel like I can hear much more clearly now. I can see clearly what he wants me to do because I mean, basically he's like, okay, I want you to take everything you've been through now and get out there and start sharing this because you know, there are lots of other people, their stories might not be exactly the same as mine, but there are lots of other people that are still in bondage in some or all of those areas and just kind of hearing this message of simplifying and stripping down your life that that can help them to really break free from that and in turn then have this you know bigger and better relationship with them if that makes sense oh absolutely yes that's so wonderful and you're exactly right it is forms of bondage it really is it's it's anything that we have built up in our life or anything that the devil can then use against us to keep us distracted right. and to keep us preoccupied so that we are not spending that quality time with him and then we are wondering why we're stressed out and we're wondering why we're overwhelmed with worry and why we have all these other things going on because we have allowed life to get in the way of truly just paring it all down and just focusing on him, you know? And so I think your message and your testimony of the journey that you've been on, it, it speaks to that, that you have, you, you can relate to that and you've actually come through the other side. So you're right. no longer staying in the place of being overwhelmed and being stuck and literally having your health deteriorate in front of your eyes at such a young age. You have been able through God's help then to man to completely reverse all of that and now just live a completely different life from what you did five years ago. It's amazing. And I think a lot of times, similar to your story where you saw, you found something from your parents that said, I lived my life in regret and that broke your heart. Oftentimes that seems to be what's the kicker for a lot of people. It's either seeing their parents or a loved one live a life of regret. And then, and that's a big wake up call or to see their health deteriorate in a way that didn't have to be that way. You know, right. something, something happened that could have been preventable. And then we see that and it's like, oh my goodness, as much as I love them, I do not want to be like them in that way. You know, God help me, help me to change this. I do not have to be bound to their pattern of life. I don't have to be. Christ came to set us free so that right. we, we don't have to have bondage of any kind. And it reminds me of what we were talking about in one of my devotions we did this morning, Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And we're talking about those words, breaking down those words, that hunger and that thirst, which is what you ultimately had. And then he began to answer. He began to fill that up within you. And, but you have to get to a place of of brokenness, you have to get to a place of fully wanting and desiring God more than we want and desire the other things. And when you do finally get to that place, he promises you will be filled. He is going to come. And that word filled is engorged. You will have overflow. You will have so much that you can't even take it anymore of his presence. He's waiting for us to ask and look and seek for that. And when we do, you're the living testimony of what happens. He mm -hmm. will answer and he will provide. And so it's just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful message. Thank you so much. And it's true because, you know, it, he says, you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. And like I said, I didn't even realize, I guess, prior to that time that I wasn't doing that. But yeah, when it just, when it gets quiet, when all of that extra kind of goes away and that excess goes away, then it just, it makes it so much easier to just have that closeness. And then, yeah, then it just blows your socks off, like the response that comes after that. And then it's, it's an entirely different way of living. And I think that's the other thing that people sometimes get stuck on is they're like, well, what if I can't sustain it? What if I can't maintain it? And, you know, I tried diets before and I, and I fall off the wagon or I've tried to declutter before and it just doesn't happen. And, and what I try to tell people is like, well, no, what I'm talking about is sort of this whole mindset, mindset shift where there's really not an option to go back because you just, you get to this point where you don't want to live like that anymore. You, you realize, oh my gosh, my body can feel so much better than I thought it could. And when you come into your house, instead of feeling stressed and tired and overwhelmed by your own space, you come in and your space feels very welcoming. It feels very clean and feels 
very stress-free. And so you get sort of hooked on these new things, you know, as opposed to the, the old ways that you were used to. And then it's not even really a question of going back because it's just too amazing. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Yes. Thank you for saying it like that because you're right. You know, we do wonder like, why couldn't I stick with this? Or, or, you know, I tried that before and it didn't work. And, and so it's, it's getting to that new level of, I don't want myself intrinsically for myself, for my health, for my betterment, for my quality of life. I don't want that old life anymore. I don't want that way. That's why I'm committed to making the hard choices and to making those changes over and over again until they become my new normal. But when you're in that process of transition, that's when it's the most difficult to stick to it because your old way is yep. so habitual. So it's getting through, breaking through. And I love that throughout your story, it's been a journey as well. You know, you look back and it's been five years, you know, right. I look back at mine too. And it's been five to six years. It's like these things take time and we are so often wanting quick results so fast that we give up too quickly and we haven't been able to allow our brain and allow our body to develop the new way of life and to reap the rewards of the new way of life long enough to where now that's what we're seeking and wanting. And so I appreciate that you talked about that because that's so often what happens, but we don't want to go back and we have to be, um, you have to persevere and you have to be committed. And like you said, you have to be anchored in your why, why am I wanting to make these hard choices and be diligent in this new thing that seems difficult at times. And I'm not sure if I can sustain it. And I, I question it but you stick with it until it will become your new normal. And then you get to live and experience life in a new way that you haven't before. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So how can ladies learn more about you? How can they get more of your tips? I'm sure you want to share with your book with them, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. So share with us how we can get plugged into what you're up to. Um, probably the easiest way is if you go to my website, which is liveafastlife.com, F-A-S-T. Um, that's where you'll find my blog. And then I also teach several e-courses on decluttering and cleaning up your diet and spiritual health. Um, that is where you can also find my book that just came out in December. It's called Live a Fast Life, How Stripping Down and Cleaning Up Gave Me My Life Back. So you can find it there, or you can actually also find it on Amazon and on barnesandnoble.com. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's a great read. It's, it's practical and it it's relatable and it shares your experience of what you've gone through and then gives very practical tips on, on how, how to make these changes and what types of things you were shown as you were guided uh, with the different people that came alongside you to help you make these changes in these different areas of your life. So I highly recommend it as well. So thank you so much, Jen, for being on our Healthy Christian Women podcast today. And ladies, we want to let you know that Jen and myself are a part of a new traveling women's conference called I Am Enough in Christ women's conference. And so we invite you to head to Facebook and find the I am enough in Christ women's conference, Facebook page, and then you can begin to be involved in what we're doing and you can see the different cities that we're going and you can request us to come to your city. We are so excited to be embarking on this new journey that God is opening up the doors for us to be a part of as well, to spread this message in all areas that we are enough already because of what Christ has already done for us. And so we want to get that message out. And so come follow us and request us to be in your city and see if we're coming to a city near you. And so Jen and I will both be in Pennsylvania, August 25th in Bedford, Pennsylvania for the first kickoff conference of I Am Enough in Christ Women's Conference. So we invite you to come join that community and begin to be a part of that movement that is happening. So all right, everybody, thank you so much for being here with us today. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day in Jesus name. This is Dr. Melody with Fit Plus Faith. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe and join me next week for the next episode of the Healthy Christian Women podcast. Inspiring Christian women to live healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. One day at a time. Grab your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox. detox.